Um, if you're surprised to see me here and not the rector in sight, you're not half as, as surprised as I am. Um, the week started well. I phoned the deanery Monday morning looking for cover for today. And um, we had various emails and phone calls during the week. And we were, we were covered for the 8.30 today. But uh, no joy at all for today's service. So I thought, well, we'll fall back on Joe. So Friday evening I phoned Joe and um, she wasn't 100, but, well, she wasn't, her throat was a little rough, but she said, oh yes, I'll do it, that's fine. So that was all well until last night, about half past five, six o'clock, and Joe phoned and she said, oh my, I could hear her voice was completely gone. So that was Joe out of the equation, so I just left myself. So, um, <laughs> here we go. Um, I thought we would do what we often do, well, not often, but occasionally at the 8.30, we just talk our way through the um, service when we get to the um, communion part. So we'll just talk our way through and, and then finish with the closing prayer. But we're obviously we're not taking communion today. So um, a few notices. Um, we've got the AGM sheets. If you haven't got one there at the back, you can pick one up when you go out. Um, so we've got those. The ecclesiastical, if I could remind you, is um, a week, ten days away. Thursday the 26th, across at the parish hall for the ecclesiastical assembly. Uh, Trish Lee's funeral is this Thursday at 11.30. And St Mary's Lady Circle will meet tomorrow in the parish hall at 2.30 when the speaker will be a representative of Women's Refuge. And the good news is, you'll be pleased to know that Reverend Bill Matthews is back here the next week. So, um, and thank you to the ladies who planted our pops up at the doors there. Um, they look good already, so um, in a few months' time, or less, they, um, it should be a bit of colour for us all. So if we start the service and get underway with hymn number 310, Holy, Holy, Holy.
We say together the prayer on page two at the top. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only God. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. We now say the prayer on the top of page three. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our name, in thought and word and deed. Through weeks, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We'll now say the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the collect for today, which is the fifth Sunday after Easter. O oh Lord, from whom all good things do come. Grant to us thy humble servants, that by thy holy inspiration we may think those things that be good, and by thy merciful guiding may perform the same. To our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The first reading is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 11, beginning verse 1. The Apostles and the brothers throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticised him and said, He went into the house of certain uncircumcised men and they with him. Peter began and explained everything to them precisely as it had happened. I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. I saw something like a large sheet being let down from heaven by its four corners, and it came to where I was. I looked into it and saw four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, reptiles, and birds of the air. Then I heard a voice telling me, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. I replied, Surely not, Lord. Nothing impure or unclean has ever entered my mouth. The voice spoke from heaven a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times, and then it was pulled up to heaven again. Right then, three men who had been sent to me from Caesarea stopped at the house where I was staying. The Spirit told me to have no hesitation about going with them. 
These six brothers also went with me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen an angel appear in his house and say, Send to John for Simon, who is called Peter. He will bring you a message to which you and all your household will be saved. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit came on them as he had come on us at the beginning. Then I remember what the Lord had said. John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So if God gave them the same gift as he gave us who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to think that I could oppose God? When they heard this, they had no further objections and praised God, saying, So then, God has granted even the Gentiles repentance unto life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. second bin, Lord Wall Hopefulness, number 467.
Gospel is written in the book of John, chapter 13, beginning at verse 31. After Judas had left, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man's glory is revealed. Now God's glory is revealed through him. And if God's glory is revealed through him, then God will reveal the glory of the Son of Man in himself. And he will do so at once. My children, I shall not be with you very much longer. You will look for me, but I tell you now what I told the Jewish authorities. You cannot go where I am going. And now I give you a new commandment. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. If you have love for one another, then everyone will know that you are my disciples. Praise to you, O Lord. Right, if you'd like to all be seated. We get to the bit where I make it up as I go along. This is just a few words, this isn't a sermon, it's not a homily, it's, um, it's just a few words that I thought to uh, wonder how to put together last night. The, what struck me, I remember this passage, it's from the Daily Bread last, last autumn, and um, it's the Trinity, three gods all one. And I know I've sat there before now and heard different rectors talk about the Trinity for 20 minutes and um, you get, you know less than when you started really, it's um, quite tricky. But this was succinct and, and it, it struck a chord with me, so I thought I'd just spend a few minutes just to read this out and um, see if it helps us. The Trinity, three gods, or one. The Bible teaches that the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. God is one being who has existed eternally as three distinct, not separate, persons. As distinct persons, each functions in his own unique manner. The Father is the originator, the Son is the agent, and the Holy Spirit is the applicator. Each person is self-conscious and self-directing. Yet one person never acts independently or in opposition to the others. I've only got one, two, three and a bit paragraphs here, plus a little bit of reading, but I've read this quite a few times and, and you need to just hear it and read it to, <coughs> to let it sink in really, because it does get a bit. Um, so I'll just say that again. The Bible teaches that the Father is God the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. God is one being who has existed eternally as three distinct, not separate persons. As distinct persons, each functions in his own unique manner. The Father is the originator, the Son is the agent, and the Holy Spirit is the applicator. Each person is self-conscious, and self-directing, yet one person never acts independently or in opposition to the others. Then we move on. All three persons were involved in creation. It was in him, Jesus Christ, that God created all things, as in Colossians. And the Spirit of God hovered over the waters, as in Genesis. In salvation, God the Father, loved the world and gave his only Son, from the book of John. After Christ's resurrection and ascension to heaven, both he and his Father sent the Holy Spirit, again John chapter 14. In fact, we could go to John chapter 14. Chapter 14, verse 15. 
If you love me, you will obey my commandments. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, who will stay with you forever. He is the Spirit who reveals the truth about God. The world cannot receive him, because it cannot see him or know him. But you know him, because he remains with you and is in you. And the Gospel next week, which is hence why I'm walking backwards and forwards because I've got so many passages here and I wasn't sure which I was supposed to be actually reading today, but next week's Gospel moves on just a few paragraphs later. Jesus answered him, whoever loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love him and my Father and I will come to him and live with him. Whoever does not love me does not obey my teaching. And the teaching you have heard is not mine, but comes from the Father who sent me. Now this is the next bit that is more relevant. I have told you this while I am still with you. The Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and make you remember all that I have told you. Peace is what I leave with you. It is my own peace that I give you. I do not give it as the, whole, as the world does. Do not be worried and upset. Do not be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am leaving, but I will come back to you. If you loved me, you would be glad that I am going to the Father, for he is greater than I. I have told you this now, before, before it all happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. I cannot talk with you much longer because the rule of this world is coming. He has no power over me, but the world must know that I love the Father. That is why I do everything as he commands me. Come, let us go from this place. So those two just tie in with the middle part of this chapter. Jesus affirmed the Trinity when he commanded his disciples to baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit from the book of Matthew. One God in three persons. In this God, we have a Heavenly Father who loves us and sent His Son to die for our salvation. In this God, we have Jesus Christ who became one of us to take the punishment we deserved. In this God, we have the person of the Holy Spirit, our helper and divine comforter, who lives in us to give us victory over sin. This trio, God hears us when we pray, understands us when we suffer, and will see us safely home. Amen. Now stand for the creed on page seven. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and is made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and 
and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge the baptism and forgiveness of sins. <coughs> We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. If you'd now like to be seated for the prayers. We'd all like to stand now and we say peace together. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And then we sing our hymn, third hymn, it's 499. Oh, sorry, when you've done the peace. <laughs> Make me a chant of your peace, 499. Peace
like to turn to page 35. We'll continue with prayer G. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right to give thanks to the Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. From the beginning you have created all things, and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You give us breath and speech, that with angels and archangels, and all the powers of heaven, we may find a voice to sing your praise. We say together, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. How wonderful the work of your hands, O Lord. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embrace the people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus, our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread, in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends. And, taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. <coughs> Great is the mystery of faith. Christ is dying, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. <clears throat> Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Remember, Lord, your church in every land. Reveal her unity, guard her faith, and preserve her in peace. Bring us at the last, with all the saints, to the vision of that eternal splendour for which you have created us through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, with whom, and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. Give us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. If we all say together the Agnes Day, halfway down on page 13, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. If we move across then to the prayer at the top of page 15, we do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy as much as to gather up the crumbs of your table. But you are the same Lord, whose nature is always without mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may never more dwell in him and he in us. Amen. And if we turn the page to page 16, we'll say the prayer at the bottom of the page. Father of all, we, we give, give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in the sun to Dying and living, he declared your love. Gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his in his life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We who the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us. So we and all your children shall be free. And the whole earth will live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now silence and stand for the lovely hymn, The Church is One Foundation, 702.
understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.